Yeah, you're right. It does look like her. Still looking for the small cat. That's not Xiaomei. We can't afford to waste our time here humoring some old lady and her stupid cat! <sighs> the not working continues. Hiding in plain sight. Episode 32, The Fuhrer's Son. Oh no, Salim! <laughs> Don't tell me. He's still running, then. Does he never give up? <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry about that, dearie. That voice. Take care, dearie. Huh? I've never seen a cat like that. <laughs> I know I heard footsteps coming from over that way. <gasps> Look, over there! Well, he didn't kill them. So, progress, I guess? That's what it said in the report, sir. He's got his own command and everything. He's leaving us a good trail. West. All right. It's time to get to work. Everyone is chasing Scar, Mei Chong, and the little cat. So, Kimberly et al. intersecting. There's ma'am. Who is this ma'am character? <laughs> Something's not right. Me and Kimberly are on the same page. Suspicious woman. Yes. But that isn't my job. Looks like a funeral procession. Well, this is the place for it. <laughs> Surely you can't worry too much about that. You still look plenty young to me. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> General Grumman, is that <laughs> <you>? <laughs> Nice. The plan was to meet in front of General Hughes's grave, wasn't it? I thought the situation must be serious <laughs> for you to resort to the last ditch plan. So just to be safe, I wore a disguise. Also, I needed an excuse to wear my Sunday best. I had this outfit ready just in case, you know, just in case. Now I see why you're known for being eccentric. That really is some get up, sir. Eccentric? I think I'll choose to take that as a compliment. Props for leaning into the role. Alka history. Maybe they have some information in the library. Yeah, if we can't find that bratty little girl, I don't see what other choice we have. I'm surprisingly excited for a reading montage. You've gained some information, but you've lost too much doing it. Right. With all the people you can trust stripped away from you, you won't get anywhere. Right, and he's totally exposed. Even Raven, too. Not too long ago, I came to Central and he asked me something. Something I found quite strange. He wanted to know if I'd be interested in a core of immortal soldiers. Yeah, it's a little strange. Do you remember the difficulties that we had in Lior? A false priest right. was scheming for power. Forces from the east acted quickly. They brought the uprising under control. But then the forces from Central came in. And the peace in Lior was shattered. After the Central forces appeared. Right, that's what they wanted. I'm sorry, General, but someone like you? You don't know how to sit by and watch. You can't do nothing. Especially when your soldiers are all hardened veterans. Men who fought in the Ishval conflict. <laughs> I expected you to come crying. <laughs> when you sent me that note, I thought you just wanted some advice. But you're trying to get me involved in this too, aren't you? I see why they get along so well. Careful now. You don't want to mess up your makeup. Right now. <laughs> oh my, no. <laughs> this show makes reading look so intense. At this rate, I'm thinking we might as well go to Shing. It'd be That'd be hard. cool. Crossing the desert in auto mail sounds hot. <laughs> yes! Long time no see. Damn, he's there huge. you are, Edward Elric. He's drinking his milk, I guess. I understand you're after a certain Shinghese girl who possesses a strange black and white cat. Yeah? But how do you know that? Colonel Mustang informed me. I'm running errands for him today. Mm -hmm. The word is the girl is headed north. According to an eyewitness, she departed by train from East City very recently. North, huh? 
Now that's some information I can act on. And I appreciate it, Major. And thank the Colonel for me, too. Hold on a second. Hmm? There's more. Take this. What is it? Is that his insignia, his mustache and Tweety thing? That is amazing. That's the best envelope stamp I've ever seen. Thinking about this, Armstrong is actually in a really interesting position. You know, we sort of know where he stands morally, where he regrets having anything to do with the war. And in some ways, he's kind of irrelevant in this whole thing, in the military, because he wasn't demoted, but he was like locked in rank, right? And despite how badass he is, you can imagine that because of his personality, higher ups in the military would sort of write him off as not really being a threat or not really being someone to watch. But he's a principled person and he has a great heart and he obviously cares a great deal for Ed and Al. And so we know he'll help. And maybe he has more mobility than other people who are being observed. First thing, see her. Her who? What do you mean? Even further north than Northern Command, you'll find an officer nicknamed the Northern Wall of Briggs who defends our border. Major General Armstrong. Wait, is that his daughter? Battle alchemist. Mrs. Question Mark Grumman. Full no, Salim, run! Hurry! There's no escape for you now, Scar! Oh, here comes the train. Final Fantasy VII, anyone? Where are they? On the train. <laughs> well, they just made it, too. That was dramatic. They jumped on a train bound for West City. Indeed. You're wearing a full of armor. Does that mean you're the Full Metal Alchemist's brother? At least he knows them apart. What are you studying? Something cool? It's called Alkahestry. What's Alkahestry? Al? I'm worried for you. Don't get attached. Don't get attached. Don't get attached to Salim. <laughs> I'm talking to myself here, too. <laughs> Al does not have a good track record with getting close to kids. I can't tell him I'm trying to find a way to get my body back, or that we need to figure out how to fight against the homunculi. Right. So what am I supposed to say? Well, can't lie. Alkahestry is supposed to have a lot of medical uses, so I'm just doing some research to see if any of its properties can be used to save people's lives. Nailed it. Mr. Armor called you brother. Does that mean you're Edward Elric, the Full Metal Alchemist? Yeah. Oh, cool! You are a tiny alchemist, just like everyone said! Oh no! I was about to say, this is the first time no one's made fun of his height. You brat! Say it again! Once more! Step away from Master Salim. No, wait! Don't shoot him! Uh, Master Salim? Are you Salim Bradley? Okay, I was wondering if they knew or not. How did this happen? <laughs> We're supposed to be heading north. Don't look at me. Bradley has agents everywhere. What can I say? My dream is to learn how to practice it. And after that, I want to become a state alchemist just like you, Ed. Uh, just like me? And then <laughs> I'll be able to help my father out as well. Uh, uh, yeah. Awkward. Yeah, fear Bradley. Tell me, Salim, do you get along with your father? You like him? <laughs> what kind of question is that? And what kind of man is he? I have a speech I can read you. He spends all day every day thinking about the people of this country. It's pretty much the speech. It's nothing new. He's always been devoted to his work. That's what he's good at. But then where women are concerned, I'm afraid he's a bit of an oaf. The first time we met, he made me so angry I actually slapped him. <laughs> but it worked out the best. He asked me out after that, and our first date was amazing. Oh, sorry. Listen to me babbling like a little schoolgirl. They love him. <laughs> it's so humanizing and so bizarre. We wonder, like, how much of it is real? How much is Bradley putting on an act to hide who he really is, and how much is genuine? How much does he actually love his family? How much does he actually love his wife and Salim? I think that's one of the most interesting questions about Bradley going forward. You know, it's like, where is he going to fall? Because we know that he is different from the homunculi in a lot of ways, and one of them is that he seems to be the most autonomous from father. And so I'm, I'm really curious where his story goes. I suspect a lot of it is an act, and we know he has big plans for Salim, as ominous as that sounds. But I want to believe, just, you know, in terms of intrigue, that it's not all an act, that there's some humanity there. There he is. Dad's home! Hi, dear. <laughs> hello, Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> well, hello there, my little one. He's very convincing. I had some free time for a change, so I thought I'd check in on my family. And I also happened to hear that the full metal alchemist and his brother were paying us a visit. Hello, sir. Long time no see. 
long time. I just saw you boys at Hasn't been that long. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really rubbing it in. So you weird. Went into this is so weird. Library, this whole thing. Salim? Yep. What were they looking up? I like a history. Why were they looking that up? I wonder. Why he doesn't look like us? No, no, sir. It didn't cross my mind. Oh, I wasn't, well, but now I am. We aren't related by blood. Oh. We were unable to have any children of our own, so we adopted Salim, and he's our son now. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong, Elric? Oh, uh, it's just that we never see you except at the command center. So this is kind of, you know... It's a side of you we're not used to seeing, that's all. Right. In a big way. But as you can tell, even a man like me has a family waiting for him at home. <laughs> I'm sure, of course, it's quite different from yours. <laughs> Please, make yourself at home. You're welcome anytime, State Alchemist. <laughs> Such a great scene. I love the tension and confusion. Like, I feel like, for me, it's just weird to hang out with my bosses outside of work. And my bosses aren't fewer, you know? <laughs> They're not responsible for widespread death and um, all this other stuff. So to be there in this context and to have to be polite, knowing everything they know, and also seeing him be like, sweet at least in appearances it's so weird bradley comes off looking awesome in this scene like he's just doing nothing wrong he's flawless like he comes in perfect family man gracing them with his presence during free time polite to the elric brothers but also totally unfazed there's nothing about him that's antagonistic or nervous or aggressive right like he's dropping subtle cues but it just feels like he's so far ahead of you he's so far above you ed and al feel like kids here you know they feel like children please come back and visit I don't know we about will. that. See you later. <laughs> Awkward laugh from Al. It's sad. Neither Selim nor his mother know what fear Bradley really is. Maybe it's not that sad. They have a, you know, great life. <laughs> I see. He managed to escape us again, did he? This is an accurate map of the West Area, right? Uh, yes, sir. This is the spot where he was last sighted. Right here. And West City is there. Scar and Marco disappeared somewhere in between the two places. Well, they're not going west. Trains slow down when they turn. But how much speed do they lose? Is it possible the two we're looking for jumped off? It would have been very dangerous, sir. But yes, it's possible. You don't say. He's a really good detective. All right, then. After they jumped off, which way would they go? North or south? No! How dare you? <laughs> One thing I'm a little bit confused about is that there are four of them in the group, right? but we're only seeing two and we're not seeing one of their faces. So maybe there's some misdirection there. I mean, we know that Scar changed Dr. Marco's face, right? Could it be that it's a decoy? Like they're in two groups or something like that? I don't know. We saw Mei Chong at the beginning of the episode and then we just saw this like hooded figure for the rest of it. So I don't know. End credit scene, nice. This is the first time we've ever been so far north. Yeah, it is. I wonder if we'll see any snow. That would be something. I might like to see that. Snow's one thing we never caught much of back home. All right, it's not vengeance written in the wall and blood, but it was sweet. <laughs> so the standout of this episode for me is definitely at an owl at Bradley's house, because that was really cool. Something's coming for Salim. That much is clear. Now we're getting to know him more as a kid. We see that he's a sweetheart. We grow attached just so we can be brutalized later. But fear of the future aside, I like what they did with Salim. Seeing things through his eyes a little bit is interesting because, you know, he sees the world the way maybe most people see it. You know, he has the innocence that we've lost. <laughs> that Ed and Al have lost. Like, ideally, this is what a mistress is. This is what the world is. It's just a place that works and you have a great king who does wonderful things. It's just that we know the problem. We know that, you know, they're all turkeys the day before Thanksgiving. Everything's fine. The thing with Bradley, it's always such a weird thing to think that even the worst of people have lives, you know? They have lives and they probably have great things about them. This show consistently does a great job sort of 
putting us in really weird situations and I think this is one of them where Bradley, you know, I don't know how much of it is true, but as far as Salim is concerned and the wife is a great guy, you know? It's just bizarre. It's bizarre to be there with our perspective through Ed and Al's perspective. Also interesting is that Kimberly, as awful as he is, he seems really cool, like he's a great detective. He's obviously really smart. That's something I didn't realize. I think the way the show framed him initially, he seemed just insane, right? And he is insane, but he's not stupid. And we've seen a bunch of that recently, right? Like we saw it in the flashback where he gave the speech during the war to Roy and Hawkeye and Hughes about what do they expect? He was totally right about all that. We saw it in the little prank he pulled with the watch, the bomb watch. And we see here that he's like a great leader of his little squadron and he's a pretty good detective and he's dedicated he has a job you know he has a job and he's taking it seriously so it's not just that he's a bloodthirsty monster he's a thinking person and maybe and this is all just speculation because i don't know enough about him yet you know you can imagine that some of his evil comes from his intellect because i think that you can end up in a point where you're just way too rational and you're like purely thinking about things in very cold terms with no humanity no soul where people are expendable or like in a cynical vein where life is cruel and difficult which it is and therefore that justifies me getting ahead at any cost or me doing what I need to do or something for the greater good that ends up hurting a ton of people, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe that's a part of his insanity. And if that's true, I think that's a good thing because it's sort of more interesting than just like, I'm a psycho, right? To have someone who is so sharply intellectual that they can justify their cra their craziness. They can justify their awful worldview. That's more of a force to be reckoned with rather than like, he's just crazy, you know? So I got to keep my eye on Kimberly and see where that goes. But anyway, that's the end of episode 32. I'll see you guys very soon for episode 33.